A very big hello to everybody and welcome back to this gamut of lectures on minimal access surgery and laparoscopy. My dear students, I believe you are missing me and today I'll be talking about yet another interesting lecture on minimal access surgery and laparoscopy. And at the outset, let me tell you that without tools, we are fools. I hope you have got me what I am going to talk about. Yes, it is the instruments in minimal access surgery. You know what's very important, if you look at a mason, if you look at a carpenter, you know what may, he may be quite skilled, but if his tools, if his tools are not okay, if his tools are not good, efficient, then it will reflect on his efficiency. So understand that before embarking on any surgical procedure, be it minimal access surgery or open surgery, or any surgery for that matter, the tools are very important. And what makes your tools? It is the surgical armamentarium. So today we will be talking about the tools that you will use in making laparoscopic surgical procedure. We call them laparoscopic instruments. Now understand that we are in a theater and the instruments, of course, you all understand have to be in the theater. The laparoscopic instruments are divided into two. The one we call as tower and another is the hand kit. Now what is the tower? The tower is uh, the cart. It is a minimal access surgery cart. Well you must have uh, seen a picture somewhere in the book that there is something like a trolley that has got the wheels and it has got different shelves and on those shelves different things will be put, different gadgets or gadgetry of minimal access surgery will be put and at the top of that shelf will be a monitor and around 19 inch, inch monitor will be there that will display the, the procedure that will display the shadow that will display the image that you purchase from the laparoscope from the abdomen and you will watch it there. Now understand this is called the tower and the next thing is the hand instruments. The hand instruments are the ones that you use for performing the surgical procedure. Now you need to understand that we go one by one and talk about them. The first important thing that we need to understand and know is the camera. Well understand that this is not exactly the camera which we use for photography but the mechanism is almost the same but here the cameras are different. We use them for purchasing the picture from the abdomen and display it onto the monitor. Now what are these cameras like? They are very high resolution cameras. Please understand that is a small thing which is doing a very very big job for you. So these high resolution cameras are now available in the market and they are very small to handle and they are very lightweight. They are not heavy so that you cannot lift them. Their sharpness optical sharpness is very very high and we have high resolution cameras. Now what is a resolution? I'll come to this term a little later. Just stay with me. Now understand that there is an excellent color reproduction and I'll come to a word we call it white balancing. But before I talk about white balancing I need to tell you that the cameras are single chip, double chip, or high resolution cameras. Now what is the word like a single chip camera? What is a double chip camera and what is high resolution camera? A single chip camera is a camera that will resolve 460 to 600 lines in one square inch. Imagine 460 to 600 lines in one square inch. That in other words means that you are going to see 460 to 600 lines in one square inch. Unimaginable. So friends just understand that is the beauty of laparoscopy which you cannot see in open surgery by your own eye. So you can understand the details of this organ is available to you, is visible to you. That's called a single chip camera. Now what is a three chip camera going to do it for you? The three chip camera will resolve 750 lines in one single square inch and the high definition camera will do 1100 lines in one square inch. That means you are not going to see only a vessel, you are going to see even the blood flowing through the vessel. There is a way of recording or processing the digital video signal 
and that is what these cameras do. They process the digital video signals and make an image out of them that is displayed onto the monitor. Then there are cameras available that have auto exposure and electronic shatters that filter the image and make it more sharp for you. They will do auto focusing. You need not to focus them. You just need to, you know, put it to the uh, organ and they will do an auto focusing. Well, just do not forget that I just talked about a word called white balancing. White balancing means getting your telescope or the camera tuned to the white color because white color is what we really get uh, this camera tuned to. So that's white balancing. How do you do that white balancing? You just supply a gauze, a white gauze on the table, on the patient, and then keep this telescope six centimeters away from the, from the gauze, and then do, there's a, there's a press button on the camera. If you press it, there will be a display of white balance, and keep it pressed. It, unless it shows okay, you need to keep it there and once the white balance is okay that means your camera is tuned to the white color and let me tell you that it is the white color that is a composition of seven colors so you are tuned to all the colors by getting it white balanced for white color the next instrument that is very important know is that is laparoscope or telescope now what is basically a laparoscope what is a telescope now understand that a laparoscope is a cylindrical instrument. It is a long thing that usually goes when we make a hole, put a trocar, through that trocar, a laparoscope goes into the abdominal cavity. What does this laparoscope do? It purchases the image and then at the another end of the laparoscope. It has two ends. It has an eyepiece, it has an objective lens. And then you attach the camera to the other end and once this image, once the laparoscope goes into the abdominal cavity, it purchases the image from the abdominal cavity. And then there is interesting no to note about, before I talk much more about laparoscopy, it's important is that the, the light will move, the image will go, flow through this laparoscope. This, this will go to the camera, which I talked about, and camera will do the resolution part. It will do the magnification part, which is 20 times, and then this image will go to the monitor and then you will have a display of that organ which the laparoscope has purchased from the abdomen and displaying it on the monitor. What is a telescope? It is a quality of a video image. The quality of video image depends on the kind of laparoscope you use. You have a zero degree laparoscope, you have a 30 degree laparoscope, you have a 45 degree laparoscope and all of them we have grooves and gutters. Now what is a zero degree, what is 30, why do we say uh, them in degrees? Now understand that the objective lens that is at one point that goes into the abdominal cavity, if it is like zero, you know there is no angulation, we call it a zero angle. So zero angle is no angle, so that is like this. It is simply a circumferential, there is no, no beveling. If this end is cut at a 30 degree, if this lens is cut at, beveled at a 30 degree angle, we call it a 30 degree laparoscope. If it is cut at a 45 degree bevel is there, we call it 45 degree. Then we have 90 degree laparoscopes, we have 120 degree laparoscopes. So why, why this angulation? Why these, these different angles? Because when we are using a zero degree laparoscope, we are only seeing, if you put it in the abdominal cavity, we are seeing all oh, a tubular vision. We cannot see the peripheral or the roof or the floor of the abdominal cavity. So if you know the angulation, if you understand that 90 degree will have more lateral, you know, purchase of the image from the body. You know, that is the idea. You know, with the 90 or 45 degree or 120, you can even see the floor, you can even see the roof, you rotate the camera lead and the camera, you can even see the, you know, the floor of the, the body. And that is the beauty about uh, having different angulation, angulated instruments, angulated laparoscopes. Now, importantly to note that is that what is the dia? The dia is around 1.9 to 10 mm. That means if you make a hole of 10 mm, it can go through a hole of 10 mm. 10 mm port, we have 10 mm port and through that 10 mm port, the laparoscope usually goes in. And we have uh, many kinds of laparoscopes. I I'm not going to put you into trouble into knowing all those things, but at least remember that we have deflectable uh, telescopes and laparoscopes available with us.
Now we need to understand that once the endoscope or this laparoscope or this telescope goes into the abdominal cavity, uh, how are we going to see? We need to have some light source. So that's very important. Unless we do have a light source, we cannot see things in the abdomen. So the light source becomes very important. And this light source has to be attached, attached to the laparoscope. It has a side limb attached to it before it ends at the other end, which is the eye lens or eyepiece. Before that, it has an attachment for a, for a lead and that lead has to be attached and that lead comes from a light source. Now what is this light source? We use uh, usually are of halogen light source, halide light source or xenon light source and they use a halogen bulb or halide bulb or xenon lamp for source of light. And then the uh, watts that we use which should be the bulb should be of around 250 to 300 watts. You need to also understand that they, there is important thing in these light sources is that they are auto regulated, manually regulated for a better visual image and uh, there is a very good crystallity and photographic clarity with these light source. That means the light source, the shelves which I was talking at the beginning in that trolley, these instruments stay there. The light source stays there. So only the cable, only the lead that comes, that goes and gets attached to your telescope or a laparoscope gets the light from the light source and it sends light through into the laparoscope and that light flows through the telescope. And once that light flows to the telescope, you will find the light will be seen at the eyepiece and that goes through the trocar into the abdominal cavity and illuminates your abdominal cavity. And you can watch everything. You can see everything because now this light will enlighten the organs in the abdominal cavity and then back from that organ, the, the image will come and there will be total internal reflections in the in the uh, laparoscope and through the camera which I talked about, it will go to your camera console unit which is again an instrument, play, place it on the minimal axis surgical cot and then from that camera console unit, another lead will go to the monitor which I said that will be on the top of the and this cot and the image will come. Finally, this is the same image that the laparoscope has purchased from the abdominal abdomen of that organ which you want to, you know, uh, operate at and this same image will be displayed on the monitor and you as a laparoscopist, you are not seeing it by opening the abdomen of the patient, you are watching it on the monitor. That is the beauty the information technology has done and look at the era where we are now. Next to that I will uh, tell you which is very important for us that is the monitor. Unless you don't have a good monitor that is finally the picture will come on the monitor and it is the monitor that will feed you with the image. Now understand the image that you are fed with on the monitor is a 2D image. Now we have three dimensional monitors also but the image that you usually see on the monitor is a 2D image and how are you going to understand it as a three dimensional image? It's only when you when the image that you see on the monitor, it is converted into a three-dimensional image by your brain. So understand, you perceive a two-dimensional image from the monitor, interpret it as three-dimensional because of your brain. So uh, regarding the monitors, we have various kinds of monitors are available. You have medical monitors which will generate high resolution images. You have larger video screens, they are preferred. And the monitor should be minimum 20 inch monitor. If it's a very small monitor, you may not be comfortable, you know, operating because you will have to really, you know, get your eyes out to see the image. So it's very important to note that if you want to be comfortably operating, you have not exerted a lot to watching monitor, it should be preferably around 20 inches. And there should be no flickering of image on the monitor because that will fatigue your eyes and you may not have a good outcome uh, doing that procedure. So that is very important, a non-flickering image, a crystal clear cut image, a 20 inch monitor uh, with you will give you comforts and your surgery will be become a musical journey. Now just to give an idea about how these uh, things happen, now first you understand that how does the image, how is image displayed on the monitor. Now I will tailor and you know these all instruments which I talked about. The first thing is a telescope. The telescope will go through the 10mm port into the 